Today, we're going to understand what is the Bitcoin halving that everyone is talking about, how it works, and why for some, it may be a big deal. Because every time I make a Bitcoin video, all the scam bots wake up. Remember that I'm not telling you to buy anything, and I'm making no price predictions whatsoever. And if you see any comments below promoting a specific coin or NFT collection, please don't vote and ignore them. The mainstream media definition for Bitcoin halving is that around every four years, the Bitcoin supply is cut in half, which means that there are less coins being created. But that definition isn't enough for us. If anything, it creates more questions. Like where do Bitcoins come from? Who gets them first? Why every four years? How many coins are left? Who decides the supply? And so on and so on. To answer all those questions, let's remember that at its core, in the simplest terms, all the Bitcoin network is, is a publicly shared Excel spreadsheet. And this spreadsheet is just keeping track of who owns how many coins. That is it. This is why when you send a Bitcoin, you are not actually sending anything. Coins aren't something you move and can be put on USBs. All that happens when you send a coin is that your balance in the spreadsheet is decreased and the balance of the person you sent the coins to is increased. So when you buy a Bitcoin, all you're doing is paying for the right to put your name and increase your balance in that publicly shared Excel spreadsheet. The reason why people are so comfortable paying top dollar to put their name in that Excel spreadsheet is because of how special it is. First of all, no one truly owns the spreadsheet, which means that no one has the power to delete it or stop sharing it. That spreadsheet will be alive as long as the thousands of computers that are running the Bitcoin software are connected to the internet. And second, even though the spreadsheet is public and all the computers in the network have a copy of it, that does not mean that editing the spreadsheet is easy. That is because when someone edits the spreadsheet, for that edit to be permanent, there has to be consensus, which means that everyone one else that has a copy of the spreadsheet will verify that the edit is truthful and correct. So if a computer in the Bitcoin network, also known as Node, tries to edit the spreadsheet with transactions that aren't true, everyone else in the network is going to reject the edit and the spreadsheet won't be modified. This scenario of a node trying to lie to the whole network doesn't really happen because of how incredibly difficult it is for a node to be given the opportunity to edit the spreadsheet in the first place. Because it is so hard to edit that spreadsheet, if a node is chosen as the editor, it is better for the node to be honest, so it can get a reward when the rest of the nodes confirm that the edit is truthful and correct. The nodes that are able to edit the Bitcoin spreadsheet are called miners, and their job is to confirm transactions. When people send Bitcoins to each other, as we know, nothing is being sent. It is all just an edit in the spreadsheet. When a transaction happens, that edit is not put immediately in the spreadsheet. That would not be secure since I could construct a transaction that says that Elon Musk sent me all his coins. Instead, that transaction goes to a place called the mem pool. All the transactions that are waiting for verification go to the mempool. And from there, the miners take those transactions, verify them and add them to the spreadsheet. To confirm a transaction, to add it to the spreadsheet, miners charge a small transaction fee. They do this because, as mentioned earlier, it is extremely difficult for a node to be selected as the editor of the spreadsheet. So it is logical that when a node is chosen as the editor, it will prioritize confirming transactions with the highest transaction fees. Miners typically validate a range of transactions ranging from 2000 to 4500 at once, and they charge a fee to each individual transaction. At the time of recording this video, the last miner to confirm transactions confirmed 3,352 transactions and made a total of 0.3 BTC in commissions, which is almost 25 grand. Transaction fees are one of the two ways miners can make money, with the second being block subsidies, that we will talk about soon. Now that we understand the relationships between the Bitcoin network, miners and transactions, let's understand why it is incredibly hard for the miners to make an edit to the Bitcoin spreadsheet. But before we do that, if you like the way I explain things and you would like to learn to code with me for free, after you finish watching this video, click the link below. There you will find free courses in JavaScript, Python, React, React Native, Go, Dart, Flutter, and Next.js, among many others for free. We have many free courses for all levels, from beginners to advanced. We also have a paid course called Nomad Coin, where we write our own cryptocurrency from scratch. We implement mining, rewards, block explorer, wallets, peer-to-peer, -peer, 
and more using the lovely Go programming language. So click the link below after the video is done and I will see you there. To secure the network against these honest miners, the Bitcoin software does not allow just anyone to edit the spreadsheet. Instead, the software gives a challenge to all the miners in the network. A challenge that is hard to solve but easy to verify by everyone else. The challenge isn't a mathematical puzzle or a hard calculation as many people think. The challenge is actually incredibly simple. All the miners have to do is to guess a magic number. What follows is a very very simplified explanation of how the challenge and magic number work. If you want a more in-depth explanation, I made a 10-part series on Bitcoin, blockchains, smart contracts, wallets, attacks, and more, where we go in much more detail, so check that out later after watching this video. At a very high level, what the miners are doing is computing something called a hash function. You can think of a hash function as a program that receives data, like the word hello, and outputs a very ugly looking string. The magic of this program is that it is deterministic, which means that the same input will always produce the same output. The word hello is always going to produce the same ugly looking string, but a tiny modification to the input will change the output dramatically. The hash function is also one way only, which means that we can go from hello to an ugly looking output, but we can never take an ugly looking output and reverse the process to find out where it came from. I can show you this output from a hash, and the only way for you to know what was the input that caused it is by trying every word or combination of words in the dictionary, until you get the same output I got. And now that we understand this, we can understand what is the challenge the miners have to solve. What the miners have to do is to run a hash function and as an input, they have to include the data of the transactions they are about to confirm, plus a magic number. Their goal is to guess what is the magic number that when combined with the transaction data produces a hash that has a specific number of zeros at the start. The number of zeros, also known as difficulty, is defined by the Bitcoin software and is increased proportionally to the computing power of the miners in the network. When the Bitcoin network started, the first miner had to get a hash with eight zeros at the start. At the time of recording this video, to solve the challenge, miners have to get a hash with 18 zeros at the start. The magic number that created that hash is called nonce, which comes from number used only once. It is not easy for the miner to find that number, but once found, it is very easy for everyone else in the network to verify if that number plus the data of the transactions creates a hash with the required number of zeros at the start. Hard to solve, easy to verify. As I said, this is a very simplified explanation. The zeros at the start of the hash are actually a product of the hashes becoming smaller, but that is a more complex story. The Bitcoin software is designed to adjust the difficulty dynamically. It tries to make it so that the challenges take around 10 minutes more or less to solve. If the miners suddenly leave the network and it takes too long to confirm transactions, the difficulty will come down. If many miners come with faster and newer computers that can solve challenges quicker, the difficulty will go up. Miners are always competing to be the first one to solve the challenge because if they win, that means they get to edit the spreadsheet, which means they get to confirm transactions and can keep the transaction fees. But apart from that, they also get a reward from the network itself. This reward happens in something called the Coinbase transaction. The Coinbase transaction, which is where the Coinbase exchange got its name from, is a transaction where Bitcoins are created out of thin air and they are given to the miner that solved the challenge and confirmed the transactions. All Bitcoins, the ones that already exist and the ones that will exist, all come from from the same place, the Coinbase transaction. When the Bitcoin network just started and there were no transactions in the mempool, the first miner had to confirm only one transaction, the Coinbase one. Back then, the block subsidy or the reward the miner got for solving the challenge was 50 Bitcoins. The reward is now down to 6.5 Bitcoins. This is due to an event called the halving. The halving is an event that happens every time the miners solve 210,000 challenges. Every time the miners edit the spreadsheet 210,000 times, which takes an average of four years. When that happens, the reward the miners get in the Coinbase transaction is cut in half, which is why it is called halving, and why we started with 50 Bitcoins as a reward, and now we are down to 6.25. In 2012, it was cut for the first time from 50 to 25. Then in 2016, from 25 to 12.5. And in 2020, from 12.5 to 6.25. The next one will happen somewhere around the third week of April 2024, where the reward the miners get for confirming the transactions will be
will be cut to 3.125 bitcoins. And this is because the bitcoin software is configured to only issue 21 million bitcoins, no more or less. More than 19 million bitcoins have been mined so far, which accounts for approximately 93% of the total supply. As we approach the 21 million bitcoin mark, halvings are the way the network can slowly stop issuing new bitcoins until we reach the maximum amount. Halvings aren't good news for miners. The revenue is basically cut in half and transaction fees aren't enough to make up for the loss in rewards, at least for now. As we saw before, the last miner made 0.3 BTC in transaction fees and 6.25 BTC in rewards. That is $24,000 in fees versus almost $400,000 in rewards. Mining isn't a cheap operation. Since the difficulty of the network is so high, miners had to buy lots of specialized computers that use tons of electricity to run and cool down. Those machines have to run day and night to be the ones that solve the challenges and get their rewards. Miners need to have access to cheap energy sources so they can stay profitable, especially after the halving, when their income will be cut by 50%. Right now, the average mining cost per Bitcoin is around $49,000, which means that even after the halving, at the current prices, miners should still be profitable, but just a bit less. What miners need is for the Bitcoin price to increase and for the Bitcoin network to be used more, so transaction fees can go up. If many miners quit mining because they don't find it profitable anymore, the difficulty of the network will drop, which means that miners with less powerful machines, but also lower costs, will be able to compete and mine. At the end of the day, the Bitcoin network will be fine and rebalance itself. And for investors, the halving is good news in a way, since it creates media hype and videos like this one that remind people that Bitcoin isn't infinite and has a cap, which makes it seem scarce and valuable. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Your subscription means a lot to me. It motivates me in creating quality content every week. So please don't forget to hit that button. Thank you for watching as always. Onjana, kamsahago, sanam hamida. See you on the next one. Dame bye bye.